This is, uh, as promised, the essay um, tips for what I'm looking for. And I just thought I'd go through the four options that you have and tell you a couple things that I'm looking for and let you know about the samples that I do have in class if you want to swing by. Um, the first one, in seeking to avenge his father's death, whether it's revenge or justice. Um, some of you have asked me about that one. I know a lot of you are, uh, are going to go with that. And I'm really wanting you to focus on defining Hamlet's purpose and not just trying to talk about the difference between revenge or justice. Um, once you define that for me, then I want you to focus on why you think it is in regards to Hamlet. Um, I'm using those references in the play that made you think that. So as long as you can prove to me why you think it was one or the other, or both the same, okay, then you're fine. Um, number two, uh, well actually, two and five is a typo, same thing. The one regarding the soliloquies. Some of you also, I think, are trying to use too many of them, as in like all seven, which is way too many. If I had asked you to do all seven, we're looking at like a 20 page paper, okay? Try to think of, off of your chart, possibly the three or maybe four at the most, but I would rather see you use three of the soliloquies and really establish the change in him from one to the next to the third. And showing me that through the lines or images or words that cause those emotions, again, using your chart to prove that to me. And um, so basically you're looking at anywhere from maybe even a four paragraph to a six paragraph essay, just depending on the number of soliloquies that you're using. Then um, your third option was the persuasive essay. And this one um, is in the form of an attorney's closing argument that I've given you this option. And this is the one and only chance that you have in this uh, rubric here to do it with first person. That's right, you heard me, first person, as in I, me, you, us, we. Uh, that's because I'm hoping to see some of you that have a really strong grasp of language. Um, your vocabulary is extensive, and I'd like to see how you can thread that through your essay and show me how strongly you can establish your point. And so I would tell those of you who were thinking about that one or were trying to figure that one out, um, it's not as easy as it looks because I want to see that that kind of um, uh, position that you're establishing can be sustained and logical. If you notice there in the prompt that I say, your arguments should be sustained and logical, okay? Aside from just the evidence you provide. Um, so please don't choose that one um, if you don't feel like you know, you're know you headed to law school one day, basically. And then the last one is um, in regards to the image of mm -hmm. disease. And again, I don't know how many times throughout the play listening and, and going through it that we pointed that out. Make sure that you choose one image. The one, If you look in the prompt, choose one of these image types. In years past, a lot of you guys choose a bunch of different images. And I don't know where that confusion comes from. Uh, but please make sure that you're picking one, whether it's the garden, whether it's uh, the tumor, whether it's um, something else entirely, whether it's the ear, which is really actually um, something you could use as well. But don't just go from those three. There's a lot of things that you could pick from that are even just decaying or um, gross throughout the play that give you that negative um, portrayal. And so establishing that and really making sure that what you're telling me in your essay for that last one is how that metaphor or symbol, for that matter, is being used by Shakespeare to try to say something. What is he trying to say with it um, overall, throughout, from beginning to middle to end? Um, and why? What, what are we supposed to get from that? Um, so aside from those specifics, in terms of the essay, you've got in the intro, what I really look for is to see that
that you know that you have a focus in the beginning, that I want to know that whether it's that last sentence that gives me your, um, your true intent for the rest of the um, essay, and then in your paragraphs that there's transitions. A lot of you are weak with your transitions, and so if you're struggling with that, um, you might want to show me maybe your rough draft before you submit it on Thursday, and um, those transitions, just allowing the flow of your thought from one paragraph to another, that I can see you know how to do that. And then your um, examples in every paragraph, in every single body paragraph, to even come close to an A, to even get there, you have to have at least two examples, minimum. That's like bare bones, okay? So two to four is what you're looking at trying to provide within that body paragraph, even more than that if you're using the one with soliloquies, because obviously you need to track that entire soliloquy. Um, then uh, in the conclusion, you should go always, not just for Hamlet, but in any essay, you should always go beyond the prompt. Take me beyond what you've already established, and now give me what you think about the thing overall, um, whatever prompt it is. Um, and I'll talk more about that later next week with the research paper as well. But in a conclusion, most of you, when you were in ninth grade, were taught to restate the intro, basically. And that's um, really where it should stay in ninth grade. And now you're a lot smarter than that, and you've got an ability to have an opinion, but you cannot have that opinion in the conclusion until you've established what you said in your intro and then proved in your body paragraphs. So then you have the right to that opinion in your conclusion, and you can use that. Um, and again, no first person except for the one that has to do with the uh, attorney's closing arguments. And um, I think that's, uh, that's really it in terms of the focus. Again, I'm not requiring MLA format for this one. Um, we'll worry about that with the research paper. This one, I want a cover sheet and uh, um, double spaced, obviously, size 12 font, the usual for that. I don't think I need to say that, but sometimes I never know. Anything else, um, you guys can always hit me up on Facebook and I'll answer any specifics. Otherwise, see you in class.